Hi comic book fans, fans and welcome to another suddenlycomics.com video. Excuse my voice, I have a bad sore throat and cold. Um, so today I um, actually drove down to an auction house in Kent to pick up a lot that I bought at an auction on Saturday. It's one lot. Uh, I paid £50 with buyer's commission £65. Okay, now if you're expecting to see my usual auction video with Marvel and DC Comics, you're out of luck. What we've got here today is more like historic documents. Okay, there are some comics, you'll see why I bought this lot, but this lot was interesting. I actually spotted it about a month ago um, and I missed the auction. I had it on my watch list and I missed the auction nobody nobody won it i actually wrote to the auctioneers i actually emailed the auctioneers and said was the reserve on that because i'll pay the reserve never heard from them anyway it came up in auction again i recognized it it was the same lot um but the uh, minimum bid had come down minimum bid was 50. Um, again i wasn't able to attend the auction i was busy on saturday but um i put a bid in this time i put a bid in i think of about 70 pounds maximum bid but i won it for the minimum bid 50 pounds this is a really interesting, <laughs> this is a really interesting lot. Okay, there are some comics here, I promise, but you'll have to wait a bit. Okay, so the first thing we've got is, uh, is a book uh, from, dates from 1900, 1900. This was printed in 1900, um, and it's called uh, The Coming of Father Christmas from 1900. Okay, now I'm not intending to go through all these in detail in this video. Just suffice to say, this is stunningly good. The um, illustrations in here, the quality of the illustrations and the printing is incredible. Um, so this dates from 1900. Um, actually, the, the auctioneers have actually put a thing in here from Abe Books uh, showing this book. Uh, for sale on a books for ninety dollars uh, and i don't think the one on a books is in good condition as this so getting this whole lot uh, for 65 pounds um, i'm already uh, heading for a good deal okay so that's the first item next three items again this is this is just in the lot these were not what i was wanting the lot for but they're fantastic historical documents the first one is the Illustrated London News. Now, the Illustrated London News rang for a long time. Um, and I think, I think it ran until the 60s or early 70s, right through from um, sort of 1900, I think. Anyway, these are three special editions. This one from January the 25th, 1936, is a special double number um, uh, well, I was a celebrating. It was not really celebrating, but it's uh, concerning the death of King George V in 1936. Now, um, I have checked up. This, uh, these, these ones I'm showing you now will sell from between 30 and 50 pounds. Um, I've seen them for more than that as well. Next one up is from um, December. 1936 so you will remember that um the king that followed george v was edward the eighth and he was the one that abdicated so that he could spend his life with wallace simpson um so uh then we had <laughs> george the sixth uh, came to the throne and here we have the illustrated uh london news with the um the ascension number and the abdication of king edward the eighth fantastic <laughs> and then i suppose we had to have the following one which is 1952 so um how many years later is that 48 uh, 14 years later we have uh the illustrated number london news um, and we have the lying in state and funeral of George the Sixth. Okay, now I'm not intending to go through these in detail. Um, I could spend a whole, I 
could spend a whole video just talking about one of these. If anybody is interested in seeing a video of me looking through any of these or all of these three London Illustrated News, let me know uh, and I'll put together a video. Right, okay, we then have another uh, London Illustrated News and this one um, is older. It dates from, um, yeah, this is the Christmas 1892 edition uh, of the Illustrated Lon London News. I mean, look at this. These are huge things. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, that's the front. Uh, there's the back. Inside, it's black and white. Um, amazing. Um and also we have the graphic Christmas number 1892. Now, whether this is a supplement to the London Illustrated News or whether this is a separate document, I don't know. Um, but again, I have a printout from um, Abe Books, which the auctioneers have put in here, saying that London Illustrated News, the Christmas edition, uh, selling um, a books for $130. So this seems like a good value lot to me so far. Uh, histor I love these historical documents. I will spend quite a lot of time going through those, looking at the looking at the adverts, reading the some of the articles. Okay, next up, and I had never heard of this. Okay, this is a magazine called the British Workman. Okay, now the British workman, I have done some research for this video, ran from 1850 to around about 1892. So it ran for about 40 odd years. Um, and it was a publication which um, celebrated the, <laughs> the British working man um, and it promoted temperance. Okay, so it's basically a temperance magazine. Um, but the printing, some of the artwork here is incredible. I've looked through some of these. Excuse me, it's my, uh, that was my press. Um, telling me that I've had enough time with the heat. Sorry about that. Okay, so the British workman. <laughs> so the first one I've got is 1876. So I think it started about 1950, 1850 something. So this is about halfway through its run. It started off and it was entirely black and white. But eventually it did have some colour um, and the, the, we got we got some colour covers again I'm not intending to go into these there are some some fantastic engravings and artwork in these they're huge tomes look at this one uh, this is from 1877 I seem to have got I think I, this is, I think this is a sort of like annual that came out uh, once a year uh, so the First one was 1876, this is 1877, and we've got a fisherman with a child. Uh, then we've got the British workman from 1878, and it says yearly part number 24. So these are, these are sort of like a yearly production. Uh, this one isn't in as good condition. This is from, even though it's newer, I say newer, it's from 1881. I mean, 1876, that is uh, nearly 150 years old. These are, uh, the definition of an antique here in the UK is 100 years old. So all of these are antiques. Um, this is the British Workman from 1881, not as in good condition, but still, you know, uh, not bad and then we have the British workman and I think this he doesn't say it on it but it's the next number in so I think this is 1882 and a fabulous looking cover um, here please father come home early there we go and these aren't just what these are great with thick magazines so they're full of stuff they're full of articles and adverts they're great historical documents um, I haven't come to why I bought this lot yet. <laughs> These were just other things in the lot. Okay, I am going to now come to why I bought this lot. Comic related. Now, the first one I'm going to show you, unfortunately, is not an original. Okay, if this was an original, 
it's worth three and a half thousand dollars but it isn't okay it's still a really nice thing uh, but it's not an original uh, this is a thing called a uh, little little pamphlet called the comic alphabet and you'll see it says on it designed etched and published by george crookshank number 23 middleton terrace pentonville 1836 okay if this was an original one of these it's three and a half thousand dollars okay but this is a unfortunately this is a reprint done by the arts council of great britain i think in around 1970 so this is about 50 years old uh, but it was not produced in 1836 um, but it's a great little thing with um, a, a little co uh, comic cartoon for each letter of the alphabet and each of these is hilarious and says something about the social social period um, at the time again i'm not planning to go through that a to z um i will do if anybody's interested but uh, there we go if you find one of those and it's an original from 1836 uh, you've got three and a half thousand pounds i think this is probably worth 25 to 30 pounds this reprint right okay now the main thing that i bought this for is um there's a number of issues of this in here and this is the boy this is boys magazine from 1922 now boys magazine uh, was a magazine produced i think weekly uh, <laughs> in london it's published in london for boys <laughs> and uh it was uh it ran from 1922 through to 1934 there were like 600 and something issues of this um, and I picked up here uh, issues two three four and five and this is what I bought this lot for to pick up these what I think it's called boys magazine but I think these are the early forerunners of comics you know that illustrated stories um, and here we have this is boys magazine volume one number two from 1922 and we've got a story called the demon racer great story of sport and adventure okay um, and in these you get well basically exactly what it says on the front illustrated stories um, so they, i mean you can see the size of the writing is absolutely minute um, and there's you get sort of pictures of uh, of uh, illustrating the stories so in this one we've got that one we've got the um uh <laughs> what's this guy's name the demon racer one of the finest sporting tales ever written it deals with the thrills of motor racing and tells how falcon swift and his and his boy assistant solved a baffling mystery so we've got a racing driver called falcon swift um, with his boy assistant and they're solving mysteries what a great premise for a story um, then we've got a story called the bully the bully of Stormgrove a rattling complete tale of Spruce Smith and Co a storm Co storm cove college telling of the mystery surrounding a schoolboy cross-country runner I mean, I have to say, um, you have to be aware that these were produced in 1922 uh, and they are not very politically correct. So when we come across people of other races, um, I'm afraid uh, the way they are treated is, <laughs> is not quite fantastic. Um, this one, you can tell how old this is by the title of the um, series. It's called... <laughs> Chronicles of the Queer Club. <laughs> this week's, this week, Dinky Spooks. Dinky is startled. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. This is fantastic. And they're in pretty decent condition. There's lots of adverts. Um, the back of this, we've got Round Trees chocolate advert. Um, 
Okay, so the Boys Magazine 1922, that's number two. That is number two of the Boys Magazine out of 600 odd. Um, and I have also got in here issues three. Um, let's just show you that. This one's got a sort of. Um, they're also advertising some football stuff, which I can't, it's not there, so I don't know, there must have been inserts. Uh, here we've got a sort of crime one. Um, also got um, uh, issue six from 1922, issue nine from 1922. <laughs> then I've got a number of things um, called, um, I think these are earlier. I can't remember the exact, I'll, I can't remember the exact dates of these. Uh, maybe somebody watching knows. These are called Young Folks Tales. I think these date from about 1900. Uh, you'll see the price is only one penny. Uh, so it's cheaper than the boys magazine. So I suspect it's earlier. Um, and this is Prince Pippin in Magic Land and other fairy tales. And this is number 198. Uh, so there are, there are a few of these. Um, young folks tales but so for me this is the reason i bought this because i'm interested in early versions of comics um we also have something here and i haven't researched this so i don't know when this is printed it doesn't say on it um, but it's absolutely fantastic it's um tales of old greece Retold and edited by Constance M. Martin, M.A. Oxen. Okay, and what we what's in here is um, a series. This is number nine of the Riverside series, um, and um, we basically is telling some of the classic Greek stories with illustrations. So we've got Pandora. Uh, and the caskets, and that's the Pandora's box story. We've got <coughs> Circe's and Persephone, uh, Prosper, Prosperpina, the Chariot of the Sun, which is the story of Apollo, Cupid and Psyche, a blighted love story, but it ends all happily, uh, the choice of Midas, so that's the story of Midas's touch, uh, Orpheus and Eurydice, so that's the tale of Orpheus going into the underworld, uh, playing his lute and trying to get Eurydice out of the underworld. And uh, Echo and Narcissus, absolute lovely. And then the illustrations in this are just gorgeous. So I don't know when that dates from, but uh, that's really nice to have as well. Okay, so there you have it. There's actually an album as well of old postcards. Okay, I don't collect old postcards, but I have. Well, I do quite like when I get old postcards. It's actually not the picture on the front of the postcard. I like taking them off and having a look and seeing <coughs> who the postcard was sent to, what the stamp on it, and what the message says. Um, maybe I will show you this. Uh, postcard album if anybody wants to see old postcards but this is really a comic channel not an old postcard channel so I'm really pleased with this lot it's um, a load of you know you pretty unique items um, for a total of 65 pounds plus my time to drive down to Kent to pick them up and come back the place that where they were was in this little old Kent village um the place was like it was like dickens it like i'd gone back to the dickens era so it was in a ramshackle old uh i wear it was, it was pre-victorian it was a just a ramshackled old house you had to go through a door which was about f four foot five tall you had to push this door you get in you went some rackety wooden stairs there was two women sat behind the counter there was no heating in this place uh, and it's about freezing in the UK at the moment. So they were wrapped up in woolly hats and scarves like they would have been in Dickens's time with mittens on. 
and I said, I've come to collect an auction lot. Oh yeah, what's your name? So I told them my name and they said, okay, give this piece of paper to Robin. Well, you, you know, how am, I, how am I meant to know who Robin is? So I said, well, where's Robin? And they looked at me as if I was, you know, how can you not know Robin and where Robin is? So they said, well, go out the door and go through the other door and go upstairs. So go out this rickety, another rickety door, go up some more rickety stairs up into the sort of um, rafters of this old building. Uh, and there's this chap there who was very pleasant, actually. Robin was my favourite person at the auction house. Um, I showed him the piece of paper the women had given me. He went off and found my lot. He came back and he said, oh, that's a really nice book you've got there. And that was the first one I showed you, um, The Coming of Father Christmas. He said, oh, I think you've got a good lot there. I said, yeah, I think I have, actually. Um, so he said, do you want a box? I said, no. So I went down, put them in the car, drove home. There you go. That's the story of this lot. Um, just that some of this is priceless stuff, really. You're probably not, never going to find any of these again. Um, you know, you might find those London Illustrated News um, commemorative issues, but I challenge you to find a copy of the British Workman from 1876. Um, I don't think you will. I, I've, I've looked for the British Workman, can't find it. Um, so how many of these survived, what the print run was, I don't know. Anyway, that's your lot. See you again soon.